We're going to go ahead and get started this afternoon. Uh, we want to respect your time, so we're going to get started. Um, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, this is an important thing for us to be able to interact with the community, talk to people, hopefully answer some questions. Uh, we have a panel of experts uh, in the fields that uh, we're talking about, so a great opportunity to ask questions. Um, my name is Jason Nags, captain with the Kern County Fire Department and public information officer. So uh, a couple of things. Um, Please remember, I'll do it too, silence your cell phones. And then we're going to have a chance afterwards for, uh, for questions. So if you could please hold our questions till after. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. First, I want to introduce um, County Board of Supervisor Gleason to say a few words. Appreciate it. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for being here, taking time out of your day to come and learn about uh, what's going on. We had a great meeting this morning down in Lake Isabella. A lot of people showed up, and uh, the team did a great job. Chief, I uh, want well, hats off to uh, how we're handling this. We had a tough year this year, and uh, it's not getting any easier. I mean, we're in the middle of this drought. Who knows how long it's going to go on? We are in a cycle of right now that uh, is going to take us a while to get out of it. Whether it's water or no water, drought or no drought, fire or no fire, we have problems and challenges in front of us that we have to manage uh, and it's our responsibility to take care of ourselves. So uh, Kern River Valley is filled with these challenges from Mother Nature and we need to be able to prepare ourselves and get ready and deal with whatever challenges come our way and that's what our great fire department is here today dedicating ta their time to help, help us prepare. So uh, we've got the best fire department in the state of California. We've got the best fire chief in the state of California and I'm uh, thrilled to be a part of this whole organization. So uh, that's all I got to say. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Okay, now I'd like to introduce uh, Fire Chief Brian Marshall, who's also the Director of, Emer of Emergency Services here in Kern County. Thanks, Jason. Thank you for being here. As Supervisor Gleason said, we have several different challenges in the Kern River Valley. We come up here in the spring when we talk about wildfire safety and preparedness, and usually we're up here in the early winter talking about rain and flooding, and that's why we're here uh, today. Uh, like to concentrate on the Cedar Fire because it impacts this area. We talked about the Erskine Fire down in Lake Isabella, but the, these wildfires uh, have a lot in common. Uh, they burn the vegetation away, and usually they burn so hot uh, due to the conditions of the fuel with the drought that it damages the soil. And what we face right now is a significant fire that burned above Walford Heights in Kernville. And there is a potential if we get a rainstorm or a series of rainstorms where we have a lot of water uh, associated with a storm. It may be just a single cell that sits over the mountain and drops a lot of water uh, over a short amount of uh, time. It could even be a series of snowstorms where the snowpack is built up and then we get a warming trend that causes the sudden melting of the snow. But all of these factors create a situation that you, the citizens of the Kern River Valley, need to be prepared for. And what we're talking about today is post-fire flood and mud and debris flow. Because what's going to happen if we have these situations where we have a lot of water or the snow melt in, a, in the areas of this, these burn scars, we could end up with massive amounts of the mountain coming downhill, the path of least resistance. And if you're caught in it, I guarantee you it's going to be a problem. Now the analogy I use is We've all been to the beach. We've all stood on the sands as the waves crashed. And just a little bit of water actually, you know, kind of moves you. You can feel the force of the water. The water we're talking about is not waves crashing on the beach, not clean water. We're talking water that is full of dirt. It's mud. It's got rocks in it. 
The force of the water may even have boulders. We know we have a lot of burned trees with logs and limbs that are down on the ground. That's going to be picked up by this water. We also know that as it starts coming through homes, it starts taking the home, everything inside the home, and moving it along. And if you get caught up in that water, you run the risk of serious injury or death because you won't be able to escape it. You may be knocked unconscious by the rocks or the debris in there. And so we're here today to talk about some strategies to help you prevent that. Now, every year, whether it's the wildfires or El Nino, or in this case, the post-fire flood event, it's all about preparation. You have to be ready now. As we found with the Erskine fire, that fire burned so fast that if you weren't prepared, it was too late. We, we say that all the time. If the smoke's in the air, it's too late to be prepared. Now you have an opportunity to take the information we're going to give you today and, and the various speakers and, and be prepared. So we are introducing a new program that we have. Uh, we've partnered with the Ventura County Fire Department because they have the same situation where they have a lot of burn scars across their county. And how many are, people are familiar with the Ready, Set, Go program for wildfire? A few of us in the audience. Ready, Set, Go is be ready and then set and then go when it comes time to evacuate. Well, now we're talking Ready, Set, Go for Flood. And there's a brochure in the back. I encourage you to pick up all of our literature because it's very important to help you prepare. But the Ready, Set, Go flood preparation brochure is there for your information to help you get ready to prepare your home today for the storm that will be here maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, next month, but whenever it comes, that you're ready for it. You know, and, and then as these storms come, you have to be in that mode to get out. And the one thing is signing up for ReadyKern so you have that early identification uh, that a storm's coming. And we'll talk about ReadyKern here in a little bit. But as we talked uh, in this morning's meeting, you're your own best first responder. If you see the storms coming, it's time for you to make sure you're absolutely ready and you're, you're ready to get in your car and get out before it's too late. And, and that go part of it, don't wait around. Your life, is, it's, it's not worth getting injured or killed in one of these flash flood events. The Sheriff's Department is going to talk about evacuations and, and how we do it, but I, I can't stress enough. When we tell you to go, go. That, that's, that's one of the key factors. You have to be ready, that, that, uh, being prepared. And there's a lot of different websites. You can go to the Kern County Fire Department's website. You can go to ReadyGov. Uh, FEMA has a lot of information to help you prepare. And I think if you talk to your fellow citizens about the Erskine fire, and even your, your uh, fellow neighbors up here who were evacuated from the Cedar fire, you know, it, it's tough to get out of your house. It's tough to leave when there's a, a disaster happening. But again, even if your house is destroyed in the wildfire or destroyed in a flood event, you're not injured, you're not killed. And that, that's what we're really here, is to make sure you're safe. Um, sandbags. Last year, we concentrated with El Nino, and we had sand and sandbags ready for you for the El Nino event. This year, our sandbags are going to be kept at the fire station for our first responders in the emergency mode. We will be providing sand, and I have a li list of locations. We'll have sand at Tank Park down on Lake Isabella, Wolford Heights Park up here, Squirrel Valley at McCray and Dogwood will have sand, Henning Flat, and the Kernville Rodeo Grounds will all have sand. We will not have sandbags at the fire stations this year. Our fire engines will be carrying sandbags for that emergency response but remember, 
We don't have hundreds of first responders up here. These firefighters are going to be concentrating on life safety in this type of event, so you have to be prepared. We'll provide the sand, but you need to go to the hardware store now, or if you have sandbags left over from the El Nino last year, use those. Um, but you need to get prepared. The Ready, Set, Go brochure has information on how you can protect your house. And primarily what we're trying to do is keep the water out of your house. So block the doors, the garage door, that keeps the water from coming in. Uh, and, and will prevent major damage to your house. But it's up to you to go get the sandbags. We'll pr be providing sand. But let me caution you, again, when it's raining and flooding, it's too late. You need to get the sand now. We'll, the roads department, and again, this is a countywide team effort. The roads department will be delivering sand prior to, you know, the rainstorms. But during the rainstorms, they're going to be clearing roads and culverts. So you need to get it now. So we will put this information up on the Kern County Fire Department's website. Again, those locations of sand uh, that we'll have out there. But you need to get it now before the storms come. A little bit about the Cedar Fire. Uh, again, it started up in Alta Sierra and burned into Tulare County. Uh, it was burning in the tree mortality area. And we've talked about tree mortality a lot. A lot of intense fire behavior during that fire. Uh, again, it destroys the, uh, the dirt, the soils, and that causes the problem because the uh, soil doesn't absorb the water. So the water just sheets off and uh, picks up the debris and that's where we have the problems. On the back table, if you didn't pick it up, is the bear report. The bear report's the burned area, emergency rehabilitation uh, report on the cedar fire. And this talks about the soils and the damage that was done and some of the uh, things that are your first responders, including the Forest Service, they played a big part of this, uh, have done to help minimize the potential for flooding. It's not everything. Uh, it's a large fire, but these are some of the things that's been done. But you know, you've been up here forever. Uh, the fire burned above Waffen Heights. It burned above Kernville. The drainages all point to your home, your community, so you need to be prepared. So pick up the literature, read it, go on the internet. Like I said, FEMA has a lot of information the Kern County Fire Department's website. We're going to continue to put up information for you so you have that information to help you prepare. But the common theme today is be prepared. It's going to be too late when that mud and debris is coming down towards your house. So uh, we'll be taking questions at the end of the event. But again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being engaged. Because if we partner together, we will be successful and we will get through this. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, next up, we have Sergeant Nicholson with Kern County Sheriff's Department. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Josh Nicholson. I'm the supervising sergeant for the Kern Valley and Walker Basin substation. I'm here to talk to you today about evacuations. Um, there's two types of evacuations that we're going to be dealing with, and that's precautionary evacuations and recommended evacuations. Now, some of the uh, legal issues we have heard in the past is some counties are on social media, they were putting mandatory evacuations. We don't actually use the term mandatory because there is no mandatory evacuation. Um, so the Kern County Fire Department's highest level of evacuation, which means you should go, is, rec is recommended evacuations. To go a little bit into that, it's uh, precautionary evaluations where we're going to show up and we recommend that you leave your residence. Uh, the reason why is we may not be able to make it back to your residence if it turns into a recommended evacuation. Um, if you are not home, the Kern County Sheriff's Office has evacuation notice tags. They're sticky. We usually stick them on your door or somewhere or window that you're going to see when you come up to your house. It's going to have what the danger is, the type of evacuation, and who came and what date and time that they came. 
Um, so if you see this, it'll have all the information that you need on that. On our recommended uh, evacuation, this means that we highly recommend and the fire department highly recommends that you leave, that danger is imminent and that there's a strong likelihood that something bad is coming your way. Um, some of the problems we've seen in the past with that is uh, people forgetting certain things. Some of the most important things are making sure that you have a full gas tank. That way you can get to where you need to go, uh, whether it be Ridgecrest, uh, in town, or maybe even Bakersfield. Another common problem we've seen in the past is people that take medications don't bring their medications. So if you have medication, it's best to grab all your medications. Uh, animals seems to be another um, issue. If you have animals and you're on a recommended evacuation, you need to bring those animals with you. And any kind of small items that have significant value to you, you want to bring those back with you when you leave the residence. The reason why I tell you that is because on a precautionary evacuation, when we set up road closures, uh, they call that a soft closure, which means that we'll allow residents back to their house. However, we need to limit the traffic so it might be difficult to get back to your house. But the more important thing is when we set up a recommended evacuation, we put up what we call hard road closures, which means you're not going back to your residence. As far as the legalities go, we can't physically make you leave your residence. However, when you do leave your residence and you pass a hard closure, we can stop you from going back into the house. The only exception to that uh, rule, obviously, are first responders and the media. The media has a special exemption that allows them to go in these dangerous areas, even against our recommendation. And I have seen frustration with the public on why is the media allowed. That's the reason why is because of the current law, the way that it is. Um, some other things, if you do not evacuate and you do find yourself in a bad situation, we do have rescue teams if you can get on 911 or have a satellite phone or if you can get on uh, shortwave radio to call for help. We do have swift water rescue teams and mountain rescue, but just know that the bulk of those teams are going to be coming from Bakersfield. We have Kern Valley search and rescue here, but a lot of the equipment is down the hill. So if you're recommended to leave, I strongly recommend that you leave. Um, also, another thing to think about, and they're going to talk about it later, is ready current. That seems to be a very good thing uh, for the residents, so you can get an early warning on what's going on. Um, other than that, uh, that's about it with the Sheriff's Department. And I'll take your questions later if you have some. All right, thank you, Sergeant. Uh, next, from the, uh, we have Chris Nicewanger from uh, Public health um, is going to talk about uh, the health concerns after the flood passes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, the Public Health Department has basically three major areas of concern uh, during a flood or a mudslide incident. Um, number one would be power outage. Um, if your power does go out, you know, depending on the time length, you may not be able to eat the food that's in your refrigerator and things like that will occur. Um, septic system failures, um, water well contamination from the flood waters or it can also be an issue. So we encourage you all to have plans in place to address those issues, have that water standing by um, so um, that you have it available. Um, again, we just encourage planning ahead. If you have to be evacuated, um, you know, have a plan in place. If you have to go to Bakersfield, where are you going to go? Are you going to stay with friends and family? Are you going to be in a hotel? Communicate that information to your friends and family so that they know where to find you. Um, have a go bag ready with clothing and supplies that you may need, including your medications. Also have a backup list of medications that includes the dosage, the frequency, the pres prescribing doctor, and the doctor's contact information in case you need to get a refill. Um, and then a communication plan. Um, or your friends and family. If, you're, if the cell phone towers go down again, how, what other means do you have available to you to communicate with your friends and family that you are safe? Um, so those are the main concerns that the public health department has and uh, we encourage you guys to plan ahead um, for those issues. Um, and I will be taking questions as well after the presentation is finished. Thank you.
Thank you, Chris. And now with uh, Office of Emergency Services, Georgiana Armstrong. Hi everyone, I'm Georgiana. I work for the Chief for the Office of Emergency Services and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about ReadyCurrent, which is the county's emergency notification system. Um, if you lived in the Kern River Valley this past year, you may have received calls from us on our ReadyCurrent system if you are registered. It is what we use to send out public safety information. Let me say this, and I'm going to say this a bunch of times. It's free. It's free. You don't have to pay to sign up. It doesn't cost you anything except the cost of receiving a phone call. Um, and we don't sell your information to third-party vendors, and we don't spam you. We're not trying to sell you anything. We use it only when there is information that we need to get to a large number of people in a very short period of time. So obviously, if a fire department personnel or if the sheriff comes and knocks on your door and tells you public safety information, that's, that's the gold standard of notification. But if we don't have a lot of time or if this information needs to get out to a wider area, we're going to use this ready comb system. So we've got some brochures in the back. It's very easy to register. You tell the system how you want it to contact you. You can register your home number, your work number, a cell number. It can send texts. Um, Oftentimes when we issue a ready, a ready current alert, we will get complaints from the public saying, the system called me and it called me and it wouldn't stop calling me. Well, at the end of the message, the system will say, press 1 to confirm receipt of this message. If you don't press 1, the system says, we didn't reach you and it's going to continue to try and reach you. So please, confirm that you've received that message so the system stops calling you and so we can tell in our system that we actually were able to reach you and give you that information. I apologize, we had uh, invited the National Weather Service to be here and I think he's running a little bit late. But we did have a bit of information from our morning meeting. Now last year they were predicting the Godzilla El Nino, which kind of didn't happen, which is a good thing. But this year they're not quite sure. We're not in an El Nino pattern. It may be average, it may be just slightly above average. But what that means for us is it doesn't take a lot of water to create a problem in a system that has experienced a burn scar because the soil has become hydrophobic. It's not going to absorb the water the way it normally would. So a half inch to an inch of water over a short period of time can create a problem. And what that means is, to be, it, it, it is in your best interest to be aware of the overall weather patterns. If a storm is coming, to be aware of that. You, you don't want to rely specifically and only on a ready current notification. Because as a storm comes through, if a cell, a, a component of that storm stalls, it can drop a lot of water on a very specific area in a short period of time. So if you are ever in a position where you are feeling that you would feel more comfortable leaving or you're concerned for your safety, by all means, do not wait saying, gee, I didn't get a ready current notification yet. You are the person at the best uh, position to make that decision for your immediate action and your life safety in the moment. But certainly, if you do get a call from Ready Kern, please take that warning very seriously. Thank you. Okay, we had some good things to learn about. Now it's your turn. Uh, questions, comments for the, the experts here, the panel. Um, we'll. Uh, take turns, we'll answer questions as best we can, and then after the question session, we'll still be available for maybe more uh, you know, specific uh, instances for questions, so. Are we, Brian, we're just using this one microphone, is that accurate? Okay, right up front, the supervisor has a comment. It was, uh, uh, just to follow up on what Georgiana said, the frequency that the NOAA gentleman offered us this morning for the weather ra radios that you people listen to, if you do listen to them, is 
four, is it 162.55? Okay, I want to make sure that got out. Thank you. Thank you for that. Is there an increased risk also with the fires that have been north of the North Pole? <laughs> you know, if you've got full run, that's where I live on the river. <laughs> My full run, and, and we do. It. But um, is there increased risk? Because there have been more fires north as well. So there could be a double whammy if, depending on the weather. Actually, I'll take that uh, question. Any of the fires that the watershed drains into the Kern River could cause problems. Uh, as the water comes down the Kern River, I'm sure everybody remembers when Kernville had water up to the bridge. Uh, that's a very dangerous situation. And again, this water is not clean water. <coughs> This is water that has a lot of debris in it, and it starts clogging up everything, and then it gets jammed under the bridges, such as in Kernville, and then it overflows the banks. Uh, if you can remember, 2008, I believe it was, the Paiute fire. The Paiute fire burned for two weeks, and as the fire went into the third week, we ended up with thunderstorms due to the monsoonal weather pattern over the fire, and these thunderstorms drop a tremendous amount of water in a short amount of time. The floodwaters came through uh, Erskine Creek into Lake Isabella. Fire Department, Sheriff's Department helicopters were rescuing people off of their roofs. Uh, this is a scene right out of Hurricane Katrina, if you remember. Uh, the water went into the uh, the, the Kern River going down towards Bakersfield. The city of Bakersfield actually had to shut their uh, water system down because of the amount of debris that was coming down the Kern River. The Kern River looked like a Starbucks coffee. It was dark brown and it had a frothy uh, film on it as it roared down the river from this storm. So, kind of a long answer, but yes, any of the fires that the watershed drains into the Kern River could cause us problems in Kernville all the way down into Bakersfield. So, be prepared. Also, to follow up on that, there's some literature on the Ready, Set, Go on the back table, and it talks about the even up to five years or even longer after a fire has been through some rain. We're still talking about the same thing. Maybe to a lesser degree, but it's still damaged. So the areas from past fires are still at risk. Wow. Uh, there are very few people here today. Uh, I would be concerned that we are the only uh, people hollering about it. We should. There, one of your staff But uh, uh, how do you get the, how do you plan to get the word out to, to more people? Uh, because we are one few uh, who have concerned ourselves with this. Well, that's a great question. I think, first of all, thank you for being here. <laughs> and we're going to push it back on you to tell a friend, right? Um, Chief, did you want to address that? And, uh, but you're, you're right. I mean, we're concerned about this. We felt it was necessary to be up here, obviously. And so. And I told some people today, they didn't show up. So we want you to talk to your neighbors, but we were a little bit smarter uh, than that. So we are videotaping. We videotaped our Lake Isabella meeting this morning. We're videotaping this meeting. Uh, as soon as we finish the edits, it'll be up on the Kern County Fire Department's YouTube channel. So we encourage you to tell your neighbors, go to YouTube, search for Kern County Fire Department, and you can view the, the two sessions. Again, the Kern County Fire Department's website, it's up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We put information on there constantly to help you be prepared. As we go through the winter, we go into the spring wildfire season, we'll be putting more information. So search the Kern County Fire Department's website, get that information, tell your neighbors, tell your friends. We all want to be prepared. You know, I, I was just thinking too as I was listening elderly people like in Kernville, a lot of retired older and one of the older people there 
and maybe I could do a hand, you know, just something and put it up in the post office. As we a will, follow up to today, you know? We will help you. We have the brochures. We'll get that information out. So if you work with Captain Nags, we, we can provide you with information. Is that and, our community place? Excellent. The post office. We, we'll get the information. We'll give it uh, your local fire station, their crews here. We can give them some information and they can put it out at uh, the post office, maybe some of the local restaurants to get that information out for somebody who, who may not. If you do have friends or neighbors that are elderly and, and can't get out, you know, pick, pick the information up from them. Make sure that they have the information. Don't forget Walker Heights. Yes. Bill, the entire Kern River Valley yeah, is at Walker Heights. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks for reminding me, Chief. I forgot to mention that. We are recording this, so what a great way to, to share it with, with someone else afterwards. Um, do a question over here. Uh, you have here that the suppression cost is upwards of 54 million in September 5th. What is the total? Do you know? Talking suppression costs for the Cedar Fire. Uh, again, that that is, uh, I don't have the exact number in front of me. Uh, that's probably pretty accurate. Oh, yeah, as, yeah, you can go on NC Web. I, I didn't bring the final fire information for just suppression costs. So it was 54 million. I'm sure it's right around that for the final cost. That is just suppression costs. That's not the damage. That's not all the rehabilitation. And again, if we end up with mud and debris flows that cause damage as a result of the Cedar Fire or the Erskine Fire in the in the Lake Isabella South Lake area, uh, you know that will you know that's a direct cost uh, of so fire have, damage. So we have no idea what the total cost is yet. Uh, I didn't bring that information. I, I didn't bring that information today, but we can get that information and, and we'll post it. But it is on into web. Do you do you know how much of the burned lumber is or timber is recoverable? Uh, I do not have that information. The fire burned primarily on U.S. Forest Service land, and they are working on those type of plans to uh, deal with uh, lumber that can be salvaged if they choose to, you know, go down that road. Uh, the Forest Service is a land management agency, also, so they're in there evaluating their forest lands. You know, taking a look and see what the damage to the the force the the forest is. So they're working on that. Uh, uh, this meeting was primarily ge geared towards the flood uh, after effects of the fire. So we we didn't bring in that type of information. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, one thing too. Um, is it Jared? Gerald. Gerald uh, from the Weather Service is here to. Uh, you know, make some comments, uh, maybe some forecasts for us, um, and then uh, he'll be able to also take questions. So, okay. Excuse me. Right. Everybody hear me okay? All right. All right. Um, looking through the next couple months, things don't, there, there's no indication of maybe rainfall or anything of that nature. Uh, though, with the particular types of systems we can see around California, especially in the winter, most of them are tied to atmospheric rivers, kind of what's been passing through here recently. And those, if you think of like a fire hose being sprayed out, it's, it's a very narrow band of precipitation, and the, the, the potential for flooding is there. Any one of those, almost all of those are warm rains. Uh, depending on how much cold air is in place. Right now, the indication for the rest of the winter is we're going to be a little below normal and a little bit warmer, kind of what we've been seeing the last couple of winters. Um, now, one of the things we're actually doing specifically for the for the fire area in the Cedar Creek, Cedar Creek drainage basin is putting out a precipitation gauge, more so for when we get into the summer months, we get into that monsoonal thunderstorm aspect, which is when we start to see those heavy downpours, uh, which is our higher probability of debris flows and stuff come off of that, hopefully to give us an early indication of any threat in that area. Lost or any questions? Okay, I can definitely do that. Um, our website is weather.gov slash Hanford. 
Uh, I can also give anybody my business card, and we can, of course, link that to Kern Fire's webpage as well. Uh, on there, you can get a detailed seven-day forecast to include precipitation chances uh, for, for your area. Uh, we're, we're not specifically focusing on down, uh, the debris flow aspect at all uh, in our forecasting, but we can definitely look at, uh, anytime we're looking for about a quarter inch in an hour or greater precipitation, uh, we do break out our precipitation estimates uh, into six hour blocks, but if we do think there is a threat, a higher level threat for uh, debris flows and the like and flash flooding, we're going to issue out a flash flood watch. Can be up to 48 hours in advance. That particular product will be followed up by a flash flood warning in the event that an actual flooding event is occurring. Could you just clarify two plus two words? A warning? I get confused about okay. that. Mandatory evacuate. I have to keep remembering what I just go. But. <laughs> okay, uh, we have actually three words to make it even more complicated for you. We have uh, a watch, which is essentially this is our big heads up. Like the atmosphere is conditioned to produce these type of uh, conditions. So in the case of a flash flood, the, there's there's potential for heavy rainfall. There's going to be enough moisture in the atmosphere, but we won't be able to pinpoint down any locations. Then we have a flash flood warning, which means that it's occurring now or is imminent to occur. Those are the ones you need to take action. A warning is specifically for life-threatening or injury. Um, and then the third is a flood advisory. And an advisory is just to let you know that flooding is occurring, but it's not specifically life-threatening, though it can be. So, in summation, a watch is watch for a warning or advisory. Well, um, as far as life threatening, uh, it goes. The warning is the most highest level for life threatening. The advisory can be life threatening. It's just not as imminent. Um, so, if you think about water on the road, there would be a flood advisory. Running water running over the roadway would be a flood, flash flood warning. Okay. And the watch is just just that advance notice that the conditions are there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Meadows. One of the things, too, that the uh, National Weather Service does for the fire department is they're able to give highly specific spot weather forecasts for us. We use it in wildfires, we use it in flooding. Um, they're able to pinpoint what the weather is doing at an exact location. Something as specific uh, as a, uh, you know, a slope on a specific drainage right here um, in the mountain front. So they, they're able to pinpoint very... Uh, very accurately what's going on, um, more so than the really generalized stuff you might get from some of the news-based apps and such. So we appreciate the hard work that they do. Um, any other questions? Question over here. Yes, uh, the SANS you were speaking of that will be available, are they available right now or will they be available by a specific date? The, the question was, is sand available right now? At this point, or? Sand is being day? delivered by the county roads department. That's part of our uh, getting ready for this season. So it may be out there in certain locations, uh, but we continue to deliver sand uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, check with our website next week. We'll have updated information. All right, any more? Question. Okay. Right. Here, you get to talk in the microphone. At the risk of being rude, oh, oh, why are there no sandbags? <laughs> why are there no sandbags? Bags. Bags. We spent a lot of money on the El Nino preparation last year, and we're hoping people still have those sandbags and they're still prepared because you know we just kind of came out of the el nino season we do have sandbags on our fire trucks at our fire stations for our first responders our firefighters uh, if they're out there dealing with a flooding situation where they may need to divert some water or something we just don't have a lot of them so we're asking you 
we'll provide the sand. We're asking you go buy the sandbags uh, and get your house prepared. We know a lot of people still have sandbags left over from last year. Bagless myself. Bagless. The hardware stores, either up here in the Kern River Valley or down in Bakersfield, uh, or ordering, uh, you know, online. There's a lot of different ways to get sandbags. Uh, I encourage you to get them now. Uh, flooding across the U United States, yeah, everybody's buying sandbags. So get them now, get them early, be ready. Any other questions or comments? Would you like to? Sure. I'm Greg Fenton. I'm the director of the Building and Development Division of the County's Public Works Department. I oversee the Floodplain Management Division. Um, although most of the areas affected by the Cedar Burn um, are not technically within a designated floodplain, just some, some words of caution if we do get some rain and we start seeing some runoff. Georgiana mentioned that when the, the fire burns and it burns hot enough, it will cause our soils to turn hydrophobic and it sheds water like glass. So with that, it can pick up, you know, part of the good stuff is we've got a lot of pine needles down to help stabilize the soil. Grass probably isn't gonna grow back for two or three years uh, to try and stabilize those banks. But we could see more runoff faster because of those hydrophobic soils. Um, and then also with that, if we get enough of a rainfall, we could see the erosion and debris laden flows as well. So I just want to remind people of the, the safety concerns with flooding and should there be a recommended evacuation or you're just trying to get out or, or head out of town or do something during a rain event, if you come across water in the road, think twice before you drive through it. That water surface elevation is going to be flat. That road surface elevation may not be. There's been a lot of times where we have seen the water crossing the road and the road is gone and you think it's just a few inches deep, you're gonna drive across it just to find out that there's a big hole there and now you're stuck. Or even worse now, we're driving across floodwaters that are laden with sediment and debris. Um, you don't wanna get it in the middle of that and get stuck in your car, because that may just be the start of that flow. If we get one of those cells that Georgiana mentioned that might just sit on an area and dump a bunch of water, it can move a lot of water really quick and you don't wanna get caught in the middle of that. Um, and obviously the whole purpose of this is trying to make you aware and get everybody prepared. Um, and, and Chief mentioned that, you know, we had some snow over Thanksgiving weekend. Good stuff. We need the water. We just don't want it all at once. Uh, but that snow will help break down those soils, start rejuvenating those soils, and get them more conditioned to be able to, to promote some vegetation. Um, but the, he also mentioned if we get a snow and then a warming trend, to start melting that snow pretty fast to increase that runoff. Even worse, we get a good snowpack and then we get a good rain on top of that. So the worst flooding we've experienced in the county is just that scenario where we have a good snowpack and then a warm rain comes in, melts all that snow, and now it's all heading downhill really quick. So if, you, if we experience those, that, that combination of events, just be careful, be on the lookout, Georgiana said it a couple times, you guys are, are the, the experts in your area, the, the best first responders, but don't take any chances. If you're not sure you're gonna be able to get across that in your car, don't take any chances, because that road may not be there, or you may not make it across, and worse things could happen. So, just wanted to remind people of those concerns. I've been here for two floods in front of, as I said, I live on the river. And it is true. I mean, every single thing that you have said, enormous trunks of trees came down that were, I don't know, three, four, maybe not, maybe three feet in diameter, uh, huge trees. And um, we took some of the water, put it in a glass to watch to see the sediment. More than two thirds of it was sediment when it settled. Right. So, and the, the waves peaked to trough were. 30, about 30, I mean, they were huge waves. Um, yeah, so it is, and it happens quickly. A foot an hour in um, 2002 when we first moved up here. Yeah. That one was the biggest. Yeah, it can happen fast. And, and obviously, the, the Cedar Fire, obviously, starting Cedar Creek up toward Alta Sierra, 
So if you're if you're going to Bakersfield or Glenville or something the back way, uh, you know 155 is a is a potential problem because of that burn on the uphill side. Uh, they they're aware that you know a lot of those culverts are undersized to begin with, but if you get good runoff or debris laden runoff, it's going to block those culverts up. It's going to back up on the uphill side, start flowing across the road, and if you get enough velocity on it, that's, it'll start cutting down the road. And, and they're, you know, they're anticipating that that's a, 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 a potential. So we got to watch for that. They said they're, they're going to try and fall the, the dead trees that are uh, potentially going to come down. They want to get those out first so they don't fall across the road and block 155. So they want to start getting some of that stuff out of the way. But um, they are concerned with all the debris that those culverts might clog up and 155 going down the backside could be a problem. But it does happen fast. Thank you, sir. Any more questions or comments? Well, if that does it, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here. If you have more individual questions uh, for our panel, you can get a hold of them uh, at this time. But uh, just the graphics on the, on the Ready, Set, Go pamphlet. I mean, that's Kern County. This isn't some faraway place. This happens in our backyard, so that's why we're, we're happy you're here. Hopefully, you can tell your neighbors and friends about it, spread the message of preparedness. And then uh, have them check out the, the YouTube channel, the Kern County Fire Department YouTube channel has some, some uh, good information. And of course, these will be um, available to view for your neighbors that didn't make it. So thanks for coming out.